guys, my name is Thomas Brush. I'm the creator of a game called Pinstripe, and I'm also working on a game called Once Upon a Coma. I wanna show you how I do 2D artwork. And more specifically, I wanna give you five steps to ensure that your artwork is not only beautiful in your 2D game, but it also, also makes sense. Um, basically, it works with the gameplay, it feels the right size for the player, um, and it also works with the functionality of the game. So let's get started. This is a time lapse of me working on artwork for my game, Once Upon a Coma. If you wanna check out the game, take a look at the link in the description. All right, so I always start out with just a block out, okay? So a simple vector art um, tracing the actual hit areas of the level. So I take a screenshot of um, the game in Unity, um, and you can also see this working out in games like Halo. Halo even starts out with a block out. Um, I'll trace that screenshot um, with simple vector art, and then I'll clearly define um, the edges of that hit area. Um, so very simple vector art here inside of Photoshop. And then I, the second step for your artwork, um, the best thing to do is really to define those areas. So I'm simply defining the hit areas, making them brick, um, and also adding a lip to that brick. And you can see this done in games like Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight is a great example of hit areas being clearly defined. You know exactly where you can stand, um, in the game and there's a clear contrast between the hit areas and also the background elements. So it also helps just to have a simple, um, maybe some grass or, or um, bushes or something that makes the hit area feel like it's nestled into the world. So here I am simply drawing some vector art for um, the grass of the level. So it's a great way to make the player feel like they're actually not only on ground, but that ground is um, placed inside of the world. So the third step to your artwork is to create pop with your palette. This is creating contrast with your color palette. So as you can see, the background of the world is blue, um, and then we pop it with orange. And you can see this kind of pop in artwork from a great artist named Ivan Earl. And Ivan Earl is a uh, Disney artist um, that I really love. I think he's from the 50s. Um, but he does a great job creating contrast between foreground elements and background elements. You can also see this in Night in the Woods. Night in the Woods does a great job of creating um, very clear contrast between the ground and the background. And I've also done this with Pinstripe. Um, so you can see that there's basically two colors in this scene. There's blue and there's orange. Um, there's also that brown, but mainly there's two contrasting colors. And then what we do is we gradient between the two. Um, so notice the contrast of the bushes here. Um, dark, dark blue, and then it's contrasted with, with the, the orange and the brown. Um, that allows the, there's a clearly defined line between the ground and the background. So right here, I'm actually adding some bushes. And those bushes are a way for me to um, allow that contrast to actually blend with the background. So we have a clear distinction between the ground and the bushes which is a great place to put the player. But in terms of the background, going from the bushes to the background, we slowly blend with a gradient. And then here we can add some more layers to the grass um, to allow the grass to feel like it's actually coming towards the camera. None of this is actually 3D, it's all 2D. Um, adding shadows, especially um, skewed shadows, allow it to look like it's not only the evening, but also that the elements, again, are three-dimensional and coming towards the camera. We also do that with some simple bevels and overlays of various um, sun shafts coming across the grass here. So the next step that we're gonna do from creating artwork that is actually intuitive and makes sense for the player is we wanna add depth with layers. And I would say that Hollow Knight is the best example, again, for creating layers in a game. As you can see, there's almost it feels like an infinite amount of layers and it just goes into the fog in the background. Um, this is a great example of using layers. I used to be really afraid using too many layers in a game. Um, and this is especially true in the Flash era. But now with, with technology being and computers being as quick and fast as they are, um, you can create almost as many layers as you want. Um, and what I usually do is start out with about 10 layers. And in the polish phase of creating a game, um, I will add more and more layers to give it that feeling of, uh, give the player a feeling like they're submersed in the environment. So here you can see in the demo, 
we've got about 10 different layers that track. Um, the foreground elements move much quicker than the background elements. Um, and so these layers in Photoshop, um, I'll merge all of these graphics into about 10 different layers and I'll import those into Unity. Um, again, coming back to the concept of merging layers or blending layers, especially in the background and the foreground. Um, what I mean there is adding shadows and bevels that slowly blend from color to color to color um, the various layers so that they almost look blurry. So this is the detailing phase, and this is certainly last, but it's not least. You want to make sure that you really focus on the detailing. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to clutter your frame um, with a bunch of details. What it does mean is creating very um, intentional graphics. So as you can see, I've got flowers and vines here that I'm using from my Adobe Creative Cloud library that I created about three weeks ago. So I can just duplicate these objects in various places. They're not all over the place. They're in specific strategic places, but it allows the frame to have um, a clear scale so the player can understand how big items actually are because we have vines, trees, and flowers that are relative to the player's size. So finally right here, we're simply stamping various trees um, in the background to give that final um, hint of depth. And these trees will slowly blend into just a simple fog of blue. Um, these, again, were created a while back. Um, so as you can see, a lot of this artwork is just simply using stamps and, or in Photoshop, brushes, um, and just duplicating them. Um, in a strategic way so that it looks unique and every frame looks new, but really we're using about six different art assets in total, patterns and various art assets. So again, as you can see, we're blending into the background and then we're also going to be adding um, a various, uh, various hints of a, a mask that blends the tips of the trees into one another so it looks like they're going into the fog. So there you go, we're just slowly blending in the trees um, to make them blend in the fog. So the, a tip that I'd like to mention here is that you need to prepare and practice. And what I mean by preparing is really learn and understand exactly what your color palette is, what your shapes are, and how you want your game to look. It took a long time, almost two months for me to figure out exactly what I wanted um, once upon a coma to look like it started out looking like one thing and it ended up looking like this and that was a long um, Process of practicing and and prepping my artwork and understanding what my color palettes were So this is obviously a time-lapse right and it looks like a, it's really easy And I know exactly what I'm doing, but there was a lot of preparation coming into this understanding exactly what I was going to be doing um, I think a good artist is not only creative, but they're also thinking like an engineer um, or an architect. There, there's a mathematical approach to doing your artwork um, and there's a system. Every time I do a frame um, for artwork in Once Upon a Coma, it's generally the same exact process. Um, it's these five steps over and over and over again. And it's not because I'm some genius, it's because I actually practiced these and was diligent in trying to understand exactly what I was doing um, and what patterns I was going to be using. So you can see here I'm just using the same patterns over and over again. These are patterns that I strategically made to be able to be used in a scalable, um, a scalable strategic way. And then just adding various gradients. So it's taking reusable objects um, and sort of blending them into the environment. Um, so yeah, don't, don't feel bad if you can't create artwork really fast. Um, once upon a coma, the artwork was created in a slow um, process where I planned the color palettes and it also allows the game to be scalable and that's why it feels consistent from frame to frame because there is a process involved. So that's my process for creating 2D artwork that not only is beautiful, but it also makes sense to the player and works with the gameplay. Again, my name is Thomas Brush. If you like this video, please leave a comment below. Um, I would love to answer any questions you have. Hit the subscribe button, and if you want to hear the rest of this video, um, which includes more tips about 2D artwork, please head on over to the Patreon page. There's a link in the description. Um, and if you support and become a patron, you can take a look at the bonus content in all of my videos. Thanks again, guys. It means a lot. See you later. Bye.